This is Robert with Pioneer Smokehouses, and we are going to cold smoke some cheese with my master built smoker today. Uh, this thing has been around a few days and it's a little bit uh, beat up, so it is a uh, signature series 40 inch, but it's the last generation, so the new generation has a little bit, a few changes. It has uh, a little bit of different design on the drip trays and on the vents, and it also has an upgraded electronic controls. Uh, this one is just your standard electronic controls, and uh, I'll tell you that if you leave this thing out in the weather without cover, it will damage your control pad between the water and the sun. It will come off, and that is how you will ruin your smoker. Um, so I'm not going to be plugging it in today because we're going to be using cold smoke. But if you wanted to monitor the temperature, you would go ahead and plug it in. But I'm feeling pretty comfortable with uh, how it's going to turn out. So first of all, let's talk a little bit about cold smoking. And basically cold smoking is smoking somewhere in the temperature range of 60 to 80 degrees, up to 90 on things like... Um, like um, cheese and nuts and uh, but you know I, I reserve cold smoking and I'm going to tell you right now that the only thing I'm going to recommend that you cold smoke is cheese nuts and salt if you want cold smoked meats I recommend that you buy them from a store or someplace that processes meat on a large basis purely for safety reasons now <clears throat> there's some information on how to do that and um, as long as you use proper cure and all the proper safety precautions, there's no reason you can't do it. I'm just not going to recommend it. Um, so then let's move on to wood choice. Now, we're going to be doing just some um, generic cheese today. And so for wood, we're not going to use anything really crazy. And uh, normally when I do cheese, I just recommend that you use good old-fashioned apple wood pellets or cherry if you prefer i prefer the wood because it has a little i mean the apple because it has a little bit mellower flavor um but if you're gonna do a fast smoke where you want to use something and you only want to smoke it 30 minutes to an hour or two use a really strong wood like hickory or mesquite pellets because they'll impart more flavor faster the only problem is when you're doing a long smoke what happens is, is that the smoke tends to get bitter and uh, we don't want bitter food. Um, so anyway, so let's go next on. What we're going to do today is we're going to generate cold smoke. You can do that with a lot of different methods. So you can use a tube. Um, I like to get a pipe that's just a little bit larger than this and just slide it, this loaded and lit inside it. Um, one of my favorite ways lately has been this cold smoke generator device you plug it in it's a, a smoke chief um, smokehouse products brand item and you can literally just load the thing up with pellets and uh, let it go and then um, when it slows down you give it a little spin and then it'll keep going a little bit and then you reload it um, remember to turn it off when you reload it uh, I find the one thing about this is, is that you only want to load it half as much as they recommend. They recommend putting in a whole cup of pellets. I recommend doing about a half a cup and then adding a quarter as it burns off and never keeping it full. It just works way better that way. Um, and the smoke just comes out the, out the little pipe on the side here. And uh, the pipe gets all of this black stuff on it. So uh, probably want to be careful with that. Um, so but what we're going to use today is we're going to use this. And uh, I'll put a little uh, shot here of me lighting it. Now, I just barely lit it because I didn't want to, um, I wanted to make sure that it was dry and that it was going to be ready to go for the video. And so you can see that it's going, that it's smoking right off there. There's a little hole on the side. and You've um, put your torch on it there that you can see in the video. And then it just burns around like a little S pattern. Um, this one is well, well used. I have a brand new one in the box in the house. Um, I'll be bringing that out for another video that I'm going to show just about accessories and stuff in the future. But I'm just still, I, I'm cheap. I'm babying this thing until the last minute. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to speed this up a little bit with the blowtorch. So this is how the blowtorch that you see in the video. I have a new one of these also, the current model. Same thing, cheap, so it's in the box. 
and you just put it on there like that and I don't recommend holding this by the way so don't do that uh, set it on a brick or on uh, your barbecue or whatever to get it lit and you can see that it just takes off um, it takes a little longer when it's not pre-lit but you want to get it burning and once it's burning like that then you go ahead and blow it out and then you can see the smoke just comes off now um, I'm gonna go ahead and change the camera and then we're gonna talk down here for a little for a minute so let's lower the camera down a little bit okay so I'm just gonna slide this in here and put it in here for now so I call this my birdhouse and uh, I'll include a picture of that up here and uh, so basically what you have here is a structure that looks a little bit like a birdhouse with a pipe coming off of it that goes inside of the smoker now this is normally how you would load your wood chips when you're using it hot so you just slide this thing in and flip it over and it dumps the wood chips in so you never have to open the door I really like that about this smoker but the problem is is that if you run the element it really won't burn the chips anything under about 150 on this smoker most smokers will burn right around there sometimes there's 140 sometimes 160 depending on the smoker so by putting this out here and piping the smoke in then I get cooler smoke and this thing puts out pretty cold smoke in general on the electric one I just add a little pipe to it and then get it away from it but they make a kit um, they, excuse me a bracket that comes with it that you could just attach to it if you wanted I just don't want it attached I want more time for the smoke to cool so open this up and if you can see here the smoke is already just pouring out now this is where the smoke where the chips normally go and burn and then this is a catch tray here and this is your bottom pan and this smoker is well used and well seasoned so so don't uh, don't hate on me for that um, but uh, and then on all of these you'll see I'm using this so now if you're gonna put the tray directly in there you want to get it near the bottom so um, I'll show you um, you want to have it near the bottom as much as you can but as close to oxygen supply because it just won't burn very well without it so you'll want to put it down here like this and kind of towards the middle and you'll see how the smoke just rises up like that um, but again you'll want to like pull this out and whatever you can do to allow extra oxygen to get in there because that'll go out if you do that like that for very long but we're not gonna do it like this we're gonna leave it like this and then the opening on the birdhouse will allow plenty of oxygen in for this thing to burn consistently okay so then what we have is we have our cheese um, I'm gonna go ahead and slide this in and then we're gonna talk a little bit here so I'm just gonna put this in right here um, if it was summer out and uh, I needed to cool this I would drop it down one and then what I would do is I would put ice blocks in there um, this is what I use for ice blocks I just use um, old uh, leftover milk containers and I fill them three-quarters of the way full of water and freeze them you know squeeze them just a little bit um, you can see once they thaw out they squeeze back down and then I put them in a plastic bag just for easy uh, cleanup so I can just take the plastic bag and throw it away and then put them back in the freezer um, and these are just generic plastic bags you can buy them for next to nothing at your grocery store most of them have them they call them like bread bags or bagel bags uh, right next to the Ziplocs okay and one other thing to mention is, is that you notice that instead of taking this off of a cookie sheet I took it off of a tray that's because I like to um, dry my cheese a few minutes before I put it out here the softer the cheese the more I like to dry it so if it's a real soft cheese I, I'm gonna dry it for a, an hour or so um, and you can do that by just setting it in the refrigerator on the rack and let it sit there as long as you want and then the outside gets drier and then when it smokes of course the smoke is gonna still get in there and it'll just change a little bit of the texture on the outside so it, like I said it'll get a little dry but at least that way your cheese won't fall apart um, so I'm gonna set this to the side here for a second and then I'm gonna go ahead and close this that way we can get it to start functioning um, 
the one downside is that uh, I'm going to move the camera again here real quick is that when your smoker is not under power um, what happens is, is the airflow isn't correct so the rising heat gives it the correct airflow um, so what will happen is, is it takes a little while for the smoke to get moving um, but once it does it'll start coming out the hole on the side now I have added this just to keep the smoke from coming straight out and going up it'll just give it a little chimney there and then the smoke will actually flow through this and it's just completely open and it just flows right through I did notch it just a little bit to fit around the hole so that way when I put it in there the hole would be in there completely um, and then that is adjustable there's a little turn dial on there on the new model it's right up on the top here and so really all you have to do is just buy the pipe and whatever size pipe you want and then just cut a couple of tabs and just screw it down on there with a couple of sheet metal screws um, make sure that you use short sheet metal screws there should be no electronics up in the very top but you don't know exactly where the wire is without taking it apart for the pass through through the controls but I think the whole module for the controls is on the back in the newer model where this one's on the front so in a minute here um, it should really start to flow through and you should be able to see smoke here um, I don't know if we're going to uh, wait that long. Um, so let's go to the cheese itself for a second here. Um, I'm not a cheese snob. I will use whatever. Um, but you can use some really high-end stuff. You don't have to use generic cheese like I do. Um, again, I'm cheap. But generic cheese, if you're using generic cheese and then you're smoking it, you're taking it to the next level. You really can take a, a product that you might eat on your sandwich and turn it into something gourmet. I just use mine for cheese and crackers, to be honest with you. Um, but when you serve cheese and crackers at a party that's been smoked, people are like, where did you buy this cheese? And I'm like, uh, I smoked it, dude. And they're like, wow. Um, but you can use all different kinds. Um, in the picture here, you'll see um, that I have some Swiss. I have some um, Monterey and um, Monterey Jack and Colby Jack and Sharp Cheddar. Um, I usually use Sharp Cheddar over anything else um, because it will hold up to the most smoke. Um, I wanted to use Swiss today. I um, rarely do Swiss. Sometimes I do mozzarella, but only in the middle of winter because it will have the lowest melting temperature. I want to aim for around 80 degrees, and that's probably where we'll be at today. Um, again, I can plug it in and turn it on and get a temperature reading, or I could literally uh, put a thermometer in there. If you have a wireless thermometer or even a wired thermometer, if you just put the wire through the very bottom of the door, you'll be able to get it in there without damaging your seal. Um, also, the smaller the blocks, the less smoking time. So these size blocks will smoke up really good in uh, four hours or less. Um, but if you have big, huge blocks, you're going to want to smoke it for a longer period of time. The only downside is the longer you smoke it, the more chance that it will get bitter. Um, as far as storing your cheese, you need to let it rest in the refrigerator for at least a week. So just throw it in a Ziploc baggie or one of the cheap uh, you know, bread bags like I was talking about there earlier. Um, another thing that a lot of people recommend is parchment paper. You can roll it in parchment paper and just toss it in the back of the fridge. You want to put it in the coldest spot, of course, but you're kind of, kind of letting it breathe a little bit. Then once that week is over on the smaller blocks of cheese, you just vacuum seal it or um, put it in a Ziploc and eat it right away if you want. I recommend at least two weeks of curing time though. Um, so once you do vacuum seal it, um, put it back in the fridge and let it sit. And then if you don't eat it in a week, throw it in the freezer. So two weeks in the freezer. Um, and then, you know, um, it will change consistency of cheese just a little bit if you freeze it. But as long as you thaw it slowly in the refrigerator, you shouldn't the, you really shouldn't notice too much of a difference so anyway we're gonna run this for um, just a little more than four hours today um, and you do want to gauge that by your smoke level but I don't know if you can see this on the camera yet um, but smoke is clearly coming out of the sides and around the whole smoker actually um, but it is starting to flow through and I'm gonna pop it open really quick and see if you can get a look so really quick and here you go and smoke so you see it just kind of poofed out a little bit there. Um, one thing I'm going to do is I actually like the cheese on this other level. 
I don't like to do this without a tray, but I'm going to do it anyway. And so then I'm just going to slide it under there to that side. And you can see the smoke is coming up and it'll flow better as the smoker warms just a little bit. So anyway, um, we'll cut back to that when we're done. I do have some cheese in the refrigerator that's aged that I'll show you in the next cut. See you then. All right, now we're back. Let's take a look here. Um, I don't know if you can see, but there's still plenty of smoke coming out. So first thing before I open this up, um, I'm going to take this and we're going to look at it. So that was a little more than half and that's four hours right there. So just over four hours for that tray. So um, I know that um, the thing promises a little bit longer burn time than that. But I'm pretty happy with the four hours. And if you were concerned about it, when it got down past two thirds, you could refill the tray while it's still burning and it'll just start burning back the other direction. So I'll go ahead and toss that back in here for now. And then uh, we'll open this up and we'll see the smoke come pouring out. Look at that. So it's been smoking real solid all all the way through the process. It just took a few minutes to get started flowing really good, which I mentioned before, because it needs a little bit of heat to get a good updraft. So I'm gonna show you that. And then there is a little bit of uh, smoke there that came off. I'll just wipe that off with a napkin when I get in the house. And uh, you can see that the outside edge looks a little wet, and it is. Um, that's just like the moisture in the cheese coming to the surface. But it, it, you can tell that it's definitely changed color. This was Swiss. It was a completely white, and now it uh, has a real solid yellow color to it. So I'm going to set this down for a second. And then I'm going to grab this. This is some cheese that I did about four weeks ago, and uh, so I just, uh, when I'm letting it rest, so after a couple of days, I'll wrap it really tight in um, saran wrap, and then I'll put it in a Ziploc baggie and leave it in the fridge. Um, I did not freeze this. I, I do it in real small batches, stuff that I plan on eating. Um, but I didn't get to this as much as I'd like. So I'm going to go ahead and just cut a piece here. And this is a piece of the medium cheddar. And you can see that it has a um, brownish tint to it there. And uh, and normal cheese consistency, there's no nothing weird about it or anything. And then this one here, it's actually my favorite. So this one is uh, Pepper Jack. When I went to the store last week and bought the cheese, I, I usually buy it when it's on sale, because like I said, I'm cheap. And uh, they didn't have any of the small loaves of Pepper Jack and they never have the Swiss, so that's why I bought the large on the Swiss. But you can see the color difference there. And like I said, that's just regular pepper jack, so nothing, nothing unique about it until you smoke it. Then you have something truly unique. And I just completely stored that in the saran wrap. And uh, so if I wanted to store it longer, I could uh, vacuum seal it and throw it in the freezer and it'd be great. And since I already have this, after those rest, I will probably um, freeze all of them except for one of the Swiss. And I'll probably keep the, that one out and eat that one almost as soon as it's done aging. So um, I think I covered everything in the first part of the video. And uh, I really appreciate you watching. 
There is uh, first off the link to the um, Mas to the cold smoke cheese in a master built smoker recipe right there on the top. There is also a link to my electric master built smoker um, article in there. And uh, all the other stuff that I use, like the amazing smoke tray, there's affiliate links below. So if you use those, I will get compensated. So I do appreciate it. Um, but most of all, thanks for watching. I appreciate it. And uh, go smoke yourself some cheese. This is worth your time and trouble. Um, we're going to be doing some other cold smoking videos and uh, including um, how to make smokers out of next to nothing. So um, for things like smoking, cold smoking cheese. So we'll do that coming up.